Welcome to Season Chasers. I'm Rob Freeman. Those that love nature and outdoor sports spend a lot of quality time looking for adventure throughout the year. The more you study, the more you learn about the peak seasons in nature. It's fun to know when it's best to go fishing or hunting, when it's time to pick blueberries, wild mushrooms, or native pecans. Sometimes the peak season is close to home, right in your own backyard, or it could be miles away near the mountains and the sea. Either way, this program will chase the seasons where the action is hot. The season is summertime. It's late August in Alaska. Ever wonder what pro fishing guides do on their day off? Go fishing, of course. We know the fishing is great in places that are hard to get to. Today, you're on the trail in bear country as we study, learn, and share wilderness river fishing in Alaska. Now there's some places you go fishing, you get to do a lot of casting. In a place like this, you get to do a lot of catching. Now this trail starts out looking innocent enough from the road up here. But um, before we get to the river, it's going to be a big booger. So um, this is about a 400 foot drop. It's one of those assisted trails where there's some rope handrails here and there. And I believe we're going to use them. Here we go. Now, this is a highly modified trail. And you can see it's got a rope handrail. It's been known to be used going down and coming back up. At the bottom of this jungle trail lies a small creek pool holding nearly spawned out king salmon. These are near the end of their life cycle and have made it to their unique spawning areas. We're going to be targeting the smaller silver salmon today that come into the rivers several weeks after this run of kings. Kings arrive with a silver color, then they turn red as they use up their food reserves. If we do well today, We'll catch more fish than we can count. We come back to an upper section of the river. We're seeing some kings in here. And we're catching some silvers. We're using kind of light tackle today. Only 12 pound line. And it's a double. Russ caught the first one. I got the second one on. Now Dennis has one. Atta boy, Dennis! Only made a couple casts here. This is a fun kind of fish. Another big male. They're getting a little rosy in here. They still got a lot of power. This fella go. I'm done. That one's loose. There's more in here. Let's get him back in the river.
good release. Maybe. Oh, got my lure back and promptly lost it on the same log. How was that for you? Another successful release. When you're catching fish like this, it's kind of hard to take a break, but uh, we've made a big hike down here, and this is the reason. We haven't seen any other people today, and there's a lot of bear tracks in the sand, but uh, the reason for it is there's a lot of salmon in the river. The kings are spawning out, the silvers are coming in, and uh, it's salmon season here in Alaska. Thanks for coming along today on Season Chasers. 100% real. Today we're doing a lot of catch and release, and uh, in order to do that properly up here with all the salmon, uh, we've tied on single hooks on our lures instead of treble hooks. And uh, all the fish that we've caught so far have been easy to release, and uh, we know that uh, they're surviving. The limit here is three silvers per day per person. And uh, with the height of the hill we have to walk up, and that trail, we've decided we want to do mostly catch and release today. We think that's a good idea, and we're going to keep doing more of it. Stay with us on today's show. On this crossing, we've got to watch out for king salmon. Uh, they're spawning out here right now, and... Uh, Amazing to get this close to great big 30 pound kings. There's been a pretty good run of them this year, and they've been close to fishing. And we're hoping that those efforts have worked and that this generation of kings is a good spawn. This river is really nice and clear right now, and we want to keep it that way so these different varieties of salmon can keep coming back here generations to come. In the Chewitna River, we're walking on rocks, kind of like big greasy bowling balls. You'll see if it's a good move after these messages. CIC Power Box, the ultimate truck accessory, is now in production at the Pittsburgh Industrial Park. Power Box is a heavy-duty truck toolbox that generates and stores electricity as you drive. 
now available in the new black powder coat design or stainless steel diamond plate. Well basically you've got uh, 110 bolts uh, built right into the unit. Uh, it's got a 30 foot extension cord that comes out of it or you can plug right into the bar strips inside. You've got 25 foot of air hose also at 125 psi so it'll run a half inch impact wrench, it'll run your nail guns, all that type of stuff, as well as it's got uh, 2100 cranking amps of jump start capability so you can jump start uh, all your trucks and vehicles, tractors, combines, uh, we're even starting yard dogs in some of these locations where they've got a lot of semis there. Quietly and safely generate and store your own electricity anywhere you can drive. Call today for a demonstration. Blue Ribbon Farm and Home has about everything you need for every season. Plants, lots of seeds and supplies for your lawn and garden. Homes and treats for wild birds. New saddles and supplies for your ponies. Dog collars and pet grooming aids. Plus grills and recipes for barbecue season. Whether you have a lap dog, a sport dog, chickens, or a goofy goat, Blue Ribbon Farm and Home has all the feeds you'll ever need. Blue Ribbon Farm and Home, rated outstanding by the Goofy Goat. When it's time to buy a better boat, Albers is the place to get your best deal on a new Tracker or Nitro. Albers Marine, Arma, Kansas, trade up to a new Tracker, ready for the lake, powered by Mercury Outboards. Albers Marine, Arma, Kansas. Your ticket to the great outdoors is Tracker from Albers Marine. Albers Marine, Arma, Kansas. Your Tracker and Nitro Boats dealer, North Highway 69, Arma, Kansas. We've moved to another spot in the river where the uh, sun isn't shining directly on the pool. And we found some more silver salmon. Dennis has a nice one on here. We're right at the uh, place where some falls are kind of located. A little bit of deep water underneath it. Turned out to be a good rested pool. And there's your quick catch and release right there. We're using single hook lures today. And the whole point of this is uh, to catch some fish. But at this point in the spawning deal, we just uh, want to let them go. And we're going to be real careful with these. And Try not to let that king get them. Oh yeah, there's kings in there too. And we're trying to keep it away from them because we've got light tackle that's mainly designed to catch silvers. Wow! That was a big one. Fish on! Got him! Wow, these are nice ones. Now this is the kind of fishing that can understandably spoil the heck out of you. Look at this, folks. We're going to keep him in the water. He's hooked in the side of the jaw. No real deep hooking with this. And if he kind of settled down a minute, we'd like to get him loose. Must be a lot of these guys in here. Dennis and Russ and I are getting lots of action. Wow. Come on, buddy. Stay in the water. And the action continues. Wow! I got a front row seat. And so do you. Look at that big hook nose male.
got him. Now this is why they call them the dancing silvers. This is the kind of river dancing I like. We're using this inline spinner. The one I have on today is a number four blade, Vibrac spinner, and kind of a yellow and red combination. Colors don't really make much difference here. I think it has more to do with your placement of this lure and we're triggering what we call an irritation strike. It's kind of like if there's bugs in your face, we strike at them with our hands. Salmon strike at their irritations with their teeth. We're going to try to irritate them today. We're catching them upstream and we're catching them downstream. Russell's got a good one on. Boy, here's a rosy one. Wow, look at this big old hook nose male. And he's free too. Wow, that would be a triple. We had Russell with one on, I just released mine and Dennis has one up here out of you. Can't keep up with this stuff, wow. Still after it. <laughs> and another successful release. There's a lot of fish in here. There's a couple of fish in here with a sore jaw. But they're going to get to complete their spawning mission here on this river. And we're just amazed at the power that they have to get through the ocean currents and into this river. And Oh my goodness. It's another one. Got him. Now there's some places you go fishing you get to do a lot of casting. In a place like this you get to do a lot of catching.
Wow. Awesome. Awesome fish. And that's the best kind. We were going to let him go anyhow. But uh, this is some incredible Alaskan catch and release action. The silver salmon here on the Chewitna River. There's more out there. Look at that. that one loose. Now see all these other ones back here? Russell just uh, warned me that there's a lot of them right there by those sticks. If I can cast over close to them without getting in the sticks, I might get me another silver salmon. Let's see. Got him! Wow, they just got the power. Incredible fight. It's amazing to most people that a river this size will uh, hold this many fish that are this large. But uh, they won't support them for long because this is a short spawning mission for the salmon. Um, the silver started coming in here in late July. It's uh, about mid-August by now. And by mid-September, they're all going to be spawned out and dying like some of these pinks are right now. Uh, the pink salmon are dying upstream and washing down and getting caught in the rocks here. And uh, we've seen a lot of bear tracks up here in the sand. And uh, that's what they're mainly after is these pink salmon that are easy to clean up. And the silvers right now are a little too feisty for the, for the bears. But uh, there's Dennis connecting with another one right now. And uh, these fish are probably past prime for uh, our use uh, on the dinner table. But they are kind of fun to do some catch and release with. And so that's why we're being real careful with these with single hook lures and uh, getting them released so they can go about their business and keep spawning. Ah, here we go. There's more in here. Look at this. This is another silver salmon. This is a medium size. But it's just fun to catch these all morning long. I mean, there's just no other kind of action back home that I can think of like this. And uh, these are the kind of trips right here that I dream about all winter long. But right now, it's really happening. And there's another double. Maybe the best one I ever had on. <laughs> You can see we're using the bright green line here, and it's mainly so we can see it. It doesn't seem to bother the fish, even in this real clear water. Now some of the silvers we've been catching are pretty rosy. This one's a little more the silver variety that would be more like the kind we'd want to keep. But this is catch and release day. You got to catch them first and then you get to release them. There she goes. Woo. A 
And now we have Dennis landed another silver right behind Tim's rock. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this little session of uh, silver salmon catching up in Alaska. Um, our guests Dennis and uh, Russ get to do this uh, a good lot of the time up here, but uh, we all agree that this is one of the best trips we've been on for quite a while. We got to see uh, some of the kings just about to spawn out, and uh, this is the magic time when these silvers return to these small rivers. They're real small, clear snowmelt streams. and. Uh, we're just really glad to uh, uh, become acquainted with some of them today using these uh, single hook spinner baits and uh, did a lot of catch and release. We think that's a really good thing to do. Now we've got a lot of them in the freezer that we're going to be bringing home and sharing with others. But uh, these are going back and uh, completing their spawning mission today. We're glad to share it with you on Season Chasers. Thanks for coming along. Are we there yet? But was it worth the walk down? Very much so. And the work and the walk up, my goodness. <laughs> we're not there yet, but we're working on it. Not too far off. Worker, worker. Tune in each week for some of the stuff you just won't see on other shows. Outdoors, wildlife, and a life of adventure. Being on the lookout for natural foods and making the most of what the wildlife provides study, learn, and share the great outdoors with someone who's important to you.